I was doing my book, because I started the research before 2008, before the recession of 2008, the numbers were already climbing, climbing, climbing. We may have seen a real peak now, but domestic violence has been on the increase in this country for many, many years, and it's gone basically unnoticed. And part of it has to do with what's happened to the male psyche in America. In study after study in this country, if you ask men what makes them feel like manly men, they'll tell you. It's not how athletic they are, how many children they may have fathered, not even if they've been warriors aptly and honorably defending our country, not even if they're sound decision makers. What makes a man feel like a man is his ability to be a breadwinner. What happens to young women who are forced to flee dangerous, threatening family situations? We know what happens to a lot of them. They end up as prostitutes. Girls who enter the life sometimes 12, 13 years old. Between four and six million women, and don't forget these numbers are really underreported, between four and six million women a year in this country are physically or sexually abused by their present or former domestic partners. And violence towards women is exalted in our popular culture and in our most popular forms of entertainment. When it comes to television, Producers are upfront about catering to a young male market. The entire industry these days is obsessed with the pursuit of young male viewers trying to woo them away from their iPods and video games, Washington Post reporter Lisa Morris concluded after interviewing several producers of new series whose sole purpose appears to be slicing and dicing up women, or in one case impaling them on the ceiling where they spontaneously combust. Shows like Criminal Mind, Killer Instinct, The Supernatural, and The Invasion seem to be competing with the top billing CSI and with one another in coming up with ever more grotesque ways of slaughtering women. When they're looking to sell the show, they always put the woman in chains, says Florida TV critic Tom Jenka, commenting on what insiders call the Die, Woman, Die television series. Our second most popular form of entertainment, electronic gaming, similarly extols violence towards women, whether it's Mortal Kombat, Custer's Revenge, Road Rash 3, all the players advance by killing women. The worst of these games, according to the American Psychological Association, are what are called first-person shooters, or the wildly popular Grand Theft Auto, which is now in its fourth edition. And again, the player, who is a petty criminal, advances by having sex with a prostitute, killing her, getting his money back, and then moving up to win the game. And he kills other people too. And the violence in these has been commented upon, but never the violence towards women for studies feel that will put forth that there is a link between watching violence, participating in violence, and real life violence. And we've seen it happen. We've seen violence towards women, domestic violence, in the shootings, the Amish schoolhouse where girls were systematically separated from the boys and methodically killed execution style.